Hey guys, the Firebird is here. It's just me. My brother couldn't be here today, as always, because he was forced to watch some Twilight as punishment for not paying this month's rent. Oh, also we got a new Patreon supporter, so every Patreon donation helps Squeaker pay the rent, so good job, there's people that actually care about Squeaker. You guys should feel ashamed for not donating. But anyways, jokes aside, so if you're a Transformers fan and if you were like a little kid like me going through Google when you didn't know what exactly you know the internet was or how large it was or whatever, you would just go on Google and type something Transformers or bunch of the following, like trying to get new info on what characters are gonna appear in the movie, what characters are not gonna appear in the movie. Because I used to do that a lot back in the day because I didn't know that YouTube was a thing for a long time actually. Don't make fun of me. But anyways, chances are that at some point when you were looking at, you know, stuff from the movies like pictures or discussions or videos talking about the movie, you probably encountered this concept art. And this one's called Still Ship, Hybrid Command Robot Form. Now, this is Death Charge. And as you can see from this concept art, he is huge. Not that kind of huge, you perverts. So yeah, look at him. So this is you, an average good-looking male named Fire. I mean, an average good-looking male. And this is that charge. Yeah, he's he's big. Let's just say that. Now, this is one of those concept arts that I think got leaked before the movie was released. I could be wrong. I just don't remember that well. But apparently this guy was supposed to make it into the movie. According to his bio, Death Charge is an expert in a field that is neglected by most Autobots and Decepticons, Ocean Tactics. Using his stealth boat mode, he's also a skilled spy on the water. At least that's what the TF Wiki tells me, and the TF Wiki never lies. Now Death Charge got one toy, he got a Scout Class toy in 2009, and yes guys, before you ask, I am gonna do that tier list sometime in the future. Not now, cause college, you know, I'm busy. But yeah, he got a toy, and the toy actually kinda looks pretty good. I mean, if this guy wasn't the movie, then we wouldn't need Optimus Prime to beat the Falling. This guy could just squash the Falling to death. I mean, if you look at the scale, a human is like not even like the length of his foot. And Optimus Prime will be somewhere around the length of his knee, with the Fallen being just a little higher than that. <laughs> Death Charge could literally pick the Fallen up like a toy and then just squeeze him to death or use one of those missiles on his back. He actually has a pretty cool design, I'm not gonna lie. Now something else that Death Charge can do is that he has a battle mode in which it's basically like stealth force but not really because he transforms into his robot mode, but he keeps his legs in like this sort of weird hybrid vehicle mode. So as you guys can tell, this guy's actually pretty good when it comes to fighting in the water. Now the question is, what this guy ever planned to be in the movie? Well, the answer to that is, yeah, shockingly enough. Now there's not any other sources that tells us more about Death Charge besides the toy and the concept out about him. But something that you should know about concept art is that it kind of exists to give like the people who you know render the CGI like that film, the movie, some ideas to hey this is how this shot should look like or hey the action scene is going to be something like this. I also explained this in another video where I talked about Ratchet's original death scene in Age of Extinction. The guy who basically gave us the information told told us that Michael Bay had really no intention of making, you know, Age of Extinction until him and some other guy basically showed him this concept art of Optimus Prime riding Grimlock like out of the ground, like the ground exploded and Grimlock came out of it with Optimus Prime as his rider. And Michael Bay was like, add five more explosions to that scene and I will make that movie. And that's how Michael Bay basically did Age of Extinction. He saw this concept art, he was inspired, he was like, yes, I need to make this movie. And then he did it. The concept art is actually designed to like create certain scenes in the movie. The whole, you know, Optimus Prime writing Grimlock from the Age of Extinction, that wasn't something that they had in mind from the start. It's something that was, you know, an idea made by the concept art. The concept art basically gave way to that scene. So if Death Charge is basically concept art here, it means that he was at least considered to appear in the movie. 
Now, what scene will have Depth Charge appear then? And I guess we can all pinpoint that one scene in Revenge of the Fallen where an aquatic Autobot would have been perfect. And that is the part where the Decepticons were about to revive Megatron. Now, what I think that was gonna happen initially was that either the Decepticons were gonna come in, you know, in mass numbers, and they were gonna raid the area where the US Navy was guarding Megatron's corpse. They were gonna swoop in just like the fallen dead halfway throughout the movie. They were gonna take out the Navy fleet, but then all of us was gonna show up to try and take out as many Decepticons as he could. But then he was gonna get killed by the fallen to you know, show that the Fallen was more intimidating. At least I hope that was their intent, because if not, then they just wasted a perfect opportunity to showcase how dangerous the Fallen can be. Either that, or you know, Megatron gets revived, then the Autobots kinda go to intercept, but since there's only one Aquatic Autobot, Depth Charge is the only one that shows up, and then Megatron fights Depth Charge, and he kills Depth Charge, and he's like, you know, the big, you know, I'm back, baby, moment of the movie. I mean, that could always be the case. But I always found Depth Charge to be a really interesting case. I actually really like his concept art. His design, it's spot on. But then again, because of his vehicle mode, he would have ended up being one of the you know largest Autobots around. And him being larger than the Autobot leader himself, and larger than the main bad guy himself, would have probably stolen the show from the two of them. And we probably don't want that to happen. Also, can I just point out how overpowered the Autobots will be in Egypt when uh, the Decepticons are like basically trying to destroy the Autobots and nest in Egypt, but then all of a the sudden the ground starts shaking because Death Charge appears, and then he uses his shoulder missiles to destroy the Decepticon army in one go, then he aims his large ass gun to the, <laughs> to the pyramid and just destroys it? Like, if Death Charge was in the movie, it would have been game over for the Decepticons. Like, I don't care, like, if Devastator was in the film. If Death Charge was in the film, Devastator would have been done for. And you know it. But, yeah guys, that's actually the story of Death Charge. Sadly, there's not much to talk about, except that he was at one point considered to appear in the movie. Oh, and if you're curious as to how powerful this guy is... Now we have Depth Charge specs in here for his toy bio. So his strength is 6, which really, really triggers me because it really should be a 10. Because he's so big, it's a 10, no question about it. How is that 6? His intelligence is 8, which I guess is pretty smart. Speed 7, mm, fine, I guess when he's on his vehicle mode, it could be that fast. Endurance 7, which it's okay, I guess. Rank 8, whatever, Courage 10, when you're that big, there's not gonna be that much to be afraid of. Fire Blast is 7, and his skill is 8. Honestly, the fact that his strength is a 6 really, really triggers me. More than it should, actually. Before we go, guys, shout out to our patrons, Morais Prime, and also to our newest patron, Ipos Faith. Thank you guys for donating, it's much appreciated. Shout out goes to Morais' Prime's channel, links in the description down below and in the comments down below. Go check it out, he needs all the help he can get. And if you guys want a shout out yourself, all you have to do is donate. If you donate to my Patreon, you can get a shout out to your channel, you can request your own videos, you can do a collab with me, and a bunch of other stuff. So, it's a pretty good deal, you know? But keep in mind, we don't force anyone, and it's entirely optional. Anyways guys, that's the story of Depth Charge. Sadly, there's not much to talk about when it comes to this guy. He's an interesting case, a concept art that, you know, got the curiosity of a lot of Transformers fans back in the day, but ultimately never appeared in the movie. He was definitely planned to appear in the actual movie because Hasbro actually made a toy out of him. Granted, it was a Scout Class toy, which, why? Why make him a Scout Class when he is huge? He should be, I don't know, Leader Class or a Titan Class or something like that. But whatever, Hasbro's weird like that. At least during the initial concepts of the movie when they were still playing things out. Because, I mean, the concept art, the toy, it's kind of a dead giveaway. And there was also a scene where, you know, Depth Charge could have participated. That one being the Megatron being revived scene or the Fallen and the Decepticon army arrival to Earth. One of those two scenes. But then again, if he actually appeared in the movie, it would have been really broken on the side of the Autobots. Because, I mean, this guy is so big, he can just squash most Decepticons by stepping on them. He can step on Megatron and it's game over. He can step on the Fallen and it's game over. He could just grab the Fallen and then 
treat him like he's like some kind of toy, like an actual Transformers toy. You know when we were kids and we would take our Transformers toy and just chew the hell out of them or just stomp them on the ground or whatever? Yeah, Death Charge is that kid. But anyways guys, hopefully you all enjoy. I'm gonna do more videos like this where I talk about characters that didn't make it into the movie. I used to do these types of videos a lot back in the day and I haven't really done so for a long time. And since Hasbro is taking a long time releasing new, new info for the Transformers Online game along with the Transformers Netflix series, I'm gonna be doing this to keep up flowing the time being while we wait. But anyways guys, that's it for this video, hopefully you all enjoy, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also give me some ideas as to what character would you like me to talk about next. It doesn't have to be a movie character, it could even be a character from Transformers Prime or whatever. The choice is up to you. Anyways. Bye guys.